Now we will start with the installation of OpenSUSE Linux distribution on your VirtualBox. So let's open the VirtualBox and choose to create a new virtual machine. So hit an, on this new button and, it, and then you can choose the name of your operating system. So I will name it as SAP underscore NetWeaver underscore 750 underscore ABAP Academy. Okay, so this is my name and I will choose a type for, as, a, as a Linux and from the version I choose OpenSUSE. So I will have to find it out. So OpenSUSE 64 bit. And then let's choose the memory size. As mentioned on uh, SAP's official requirements, uh, you should uh, have at least six gigabytes of, the, of RAM. Uh, from experiences, you can run it on four gigs uh, or on five gigs. Uh, this is sufficient as well. Uh, if you give it more, uh, like six, uh, it is perfectly fine. Uh, from my experiences, uh, five gigs, it's perfectly fine as well. So I will leave with this one, uh, depending on your resources. So you can play around with those. Uh, with those settings if you place or if you start with the four gigabytes uh, You can expect that your system will be sl uh, much slower or uh, server will be much slower But definitely it will work. So right now I will choose five gigs and I make sure that uh, I hit on create a virtual hard disk now Okay, so let's choose create We will choose the file size of your hard drive. So I will put here 100 gigabytes uh, even though in a reality you don't need that let's keep it uh, as 100 as sap proposes and what we can do we can dynamically allocate uh, this physical hard drive so at the end it, w it means that physically you don't need uh, or you will not allocate 100 gigabytes on your hard drive or virtual box software will allocate only that many hard drive uh, space as needed up to 100 gigabytes so this is no problem for, for uh, in a real you will use less than 100 gigabytes so this is why you should use dynamically allocated uh, physical hard drive disk storage and then uh, if uh, what kind of disk file type to choose uh, this is the standard VirtualBox disk disk image uh, VDI uh, what I like to do is to either choose this one VDI VirtualBox disk or to choose VMDK which is virtual machine disk and this is used on more virtualization softwares like VMware and others so if you would like to uh, make this uh, virtual machine available also to other software or to other plat platforms uh, so let's say that you are currently running that on the on the windows and you would like to run it uh, later on on linux or mac uh, this is the file type that you can use and you want to use and the other advantage of uh, using this uh, vmdk file is that you can split uh, those installation files or those files uh, for virtual machine into files less than two gigabytes and this is handy when you want to store your virtual machine somewhere to the cloud where cloud solutions do not support uh, uploading more than uh, four gigabytes of, of, of one file so this is what you can do um, what i will do i will i will i will check this vmdk okay and i hit create Okay, and this is our virtual machine which is created so it is at the end of, of all the list of the list of all the virtual machines that you have created uh, currently you will have here only one virtual machine and this is uh, in my case SAP NetWeaver 750 Web Academy so this is my virtual machine now we want to uh, make some uh, tweaks and change some settings of this virtual machine so hit on the settings and what we want to do right now is to uh, set up some uh, general and uh, uh, useful settings for our machine. So what I will do, in I make sure that I'm in a general and I hit on advanced tab 
and here you have the snapshot folder uh, what we want to do is to share our clipboard so whenever you will copy in uh, you want to copy something from your pc uh, if you are on a windows you want to share your clipboard uh, by direction in a bi-directional way so that you can copy and paste it into your virtual machine and vice versa and also we want to allow dragging and dropping from your pc to your uh, virtual machine and vice versa as well. So this is the very handful um, setting for the beginning. Then we can go into system and this is our motherboard settings. So we will leave this as it is right now. You can play around with the RAM right here so you can change it on the fly. Uh, what I will do, I will go in the processor and I make sure that I make uh, at least two processors available uh, depending on your hardware uh, availability, uh, you want to put there at least two. So this this is uh, the good setting for the performance of your virtual machine. And once we have done that, we can click on OK and our virtual machine is ready to start the installation. So right now we don't have anything in there installed. Uh, so we are going to install their SAP SUSE distribution. So what we will do, we will start this virtual machine. So let's uh, make sure that you have selected your cre your newly created virtual machine and hit on start and after a few seconds we get a pop-up window where we have to select startup disk so at the end we should find out our installation file our iso file with the installation of our linux distribution so what we will do i will go and search for my for the location of my linux distribution so I will choose OpenSUSE Leap for 2.3, uh, my net version. So I, what I will do, I will just hit open. And right now I can start the installation of my Linux distribution. So I hit start. And let's wait uh, while this installation is being uh, started. We can choose from boot from hard disk, installation, upgrade and more. So what we will choose, we will choose installation because we want to install this OpenSUSE right now. So what I will do, I will uh, hit on the arrow down uh, so that I can highlight the installation and then I will hit enter. And now the installation is starting. So a uh, little Linux kernel is being loaded. So let's wait for a while. And after all the installation files files have been loaded, uh, we can we get the following window uh, where we have to accept the license agreement. So what we will do, uh, we will firstly we will choose the language. So we will choose English US. This is the one which uh, we have tried to install SAP system. So and and this one uh, this language uh, works for sure. So uh, what you can do, you can also play around with different languages. Uh, this is the uh, tested language where SAP installation works uh, and also keyboard layout we will leave this uh, we will leave it we, we will leave with this one English US as well uh, then you should read through the license agreement so make sure that you read through that and if you agree with all the conditions uh, you should go down here and click on the abort on the next uh, we will choose the next and then the installation uh, proceeds further so then the system is probing and the system is making sure that all the things are ready and then we then SAP or then the Linux is, is downloading all the files that are needed for this installation so we will have to wait for this uh, again for a while depending on your internet connection uh, this time may, may vary so let's wait Okay, so now uh, installation has stopped at the suggested partitioning. So we will make sure that we uh, hit on this edit proposal settings. And you make sure that uh, the partition based proposal is checked. Then from file system for root partition, choose from this list box and choose the X4 and uncheck propose separate home partition and then choose OK. So when we have all the settings set up, we can choose next. 
Okay, so now we have to set up the clock and time zone depending on your region. Uh, you will choose the uh, region and uh, time zone. So, so what I will do, I will just find you Europe and time zone is Slovakia. So let's uh, use this one and then we can hit next or you can play around with the settings so you can set up the ma manual time or you can synchronize it with NTP server so this is what, what we will do so I will not do any changes and then I will hit next from the user interface uh, we will select the user interface uh, let's do the desktop with the gnome and hit next again and here you will create your local user which will be your administration user so let's choose full name so what I will do I will use ABAP Academy and the username will be ABAP Academy as, as well with the, uh, with the, in the lower case and all together and then you have to choose the password uh, it, with the password uh, you make sure that the password must be at least seven characters long it should contain lower and uppercase plus some numbers no uh, you don't use any special characters because it may cause you issues later when running SAP system so make sure that you don't use any uh, special characters what I will do I will just uh, use the password abap777 so this, this is what I will do abap777 and again abap777 to confirm the password and I will use this password for system administration and also uh, I will automatically log in to the system after I firstly boot uh, to the system so then I will use I will choose the next okay and uh, installation tells me that the password is too simple it doesn't contain any different characters really do I want to use this password because of the reasons of SAP installation and the uh, issues that we came through or we went through uh, during the installation yes you want to keep this password that simple so something like that you will use it uh, on, for your needs you will not create or you are not creating this SAP installation for uh, the production use you are only going to use it by yourself so you don't need to make it like password for the treasures so we can use this password and hit yes okay and we have few other installation settings uh, stated here so we can uh, click on the headline to make changes and we will do few tweaks around here so first one we make sure that we disable firewall so what I will do I will go to the firewall settings so it's down here fire firewall and SSH and here are uh, the firewall settings so firewall uh, will be uh, is disabled currently and SSH service is uh, enabled so what we will do we will click on the disable so then we will enable uh, right here we will enable uh, firewall and we will we want to disable SSH service so click on the on the enable link and it will automatically disable SSH so this is what we are looking for for this for these kind of settings if you have that one we can hit on install and uh, Linux is asking us if we are sure that all the settings are right and we want to proceed with the installation so if we will hit on install this is what we will do all the information that we have set up will be now modified on our hard drive on our installation so this is what we will do hit on install and right now uh, the installation is performing so again we will have to wait for a few minutes uh, depending on uh, your hardware settings and your internet connection because Linux is also downloading some files and as you can see uh, these installing packages there are like 3.8 gigabytes left so this will take this will take some time so let's uh, have a coffee come back when everything is ready okay and if your installation is done 
uh, and you took a coffee or two or three or also in my case I find my system already in this state so after installation Linux system is rebooted and you find it in this state or if you get into boot screen you choose boot from hard disk okay so now our Linux system is already up and running and we can focus on setting up this OpenSUSE uh, system Linux distribution so that we can prepare everything to make this SAP server running properly on this system. And this is what we will do in upcoming lecture. So we are going to set up this Linux system so that we can run our SAP server on this virtual machine.